You know, whatever it takes. Just mow the lawn. Mow the grass. <laughs> well, anyway, <clears throat> I think her thinking here is, and, and there could be something to this, right? If you get very tall grass, then people can hide in it. So if you just mow it, then maybe you can stop some of those illegal crossings. Joining me right now with a look at the future of the Democratic Party, so long as Nancy Pelosi is there and Donald Trump is in the White House, Bullseye Brief author and publisher Adam Johnson. And you are the perfect guy to talk about this because we get a market that's up 260. Yep. You have been very bullish on this market. You have been very bullish on this economy. And you've made the point over and over and over again, Adam, yes. that it's because of the policies that are coming from this administration, the economic policies. With that in mind, where does that leave Nancy Pelosi and the Dems? Well, you know, Nancy Pelosi called uh, the tax cuts Armageddon with good reason, because they are for the Democrats. If you are voting with your pocketbook, you're certainly not putting a Democrat in office uh, come November. This is an incredibly powerful trend that's happening. Think about it, Trish. The average American makes $55,000 and is getting a $2,000 raise because of tax cuts. And then all those so-called crumbs that she was talking about, those $1,000 one-time bonuses from companies to people, that adds another 1000 bucks. That's $3,000. I mean, that's a 6% raise this year, and people are going to spend that money. They're going to feel great, and I think they're also going to vote GOP. Isn't it kind of remarkable? I mean, you're looking at a president who, you know, is having these uh, listening sessions right now. Right with the victims of, of gun violence and who's talking about, you know, putting in an age limit on, on guns, who's talking about reforming our immigration system and perhaps providing citizenship right. to so many people that are here illegally. He's doing some interesting things. Uh, he's talking he's about making some lines. exactly yeah. America great again and appealing. You know, just yesterday meeting with the likes of Richard Trumka and other union heads. Sure. Um, to, to show them that it, American workers do matter in this economy and they do need to come first. And I guess it's just fascinating because I don't know what's going to be left for Nancy Pelosi and her colleagues right. because he's increasingly encroaching on their traditional territory, Adam. Well, you know, I'm actually waiting for him to, and he's, he's already sort of, you know, opened the door to this, to putting together some sort of deal where he says to a Pelosi or a Schumer, guys, I tell you what. You give me funding for my wall, and I'm going to give um, your DACA kids and the Dreamers a pathway to citizenship. He's already hinted at that. And I think that's the kind of crossing the aisle that we used to see, uh, certainly under Ronald Reagan. I hate to give him credit, but even Bill Clinton. Um, sure. You know, well, th I mean, welfare were... reform, that was, I mean, Newt yeah. Gingrich had a big hand in that. But, yes. but welfare reform happened under Bill Clinton. Yes, that's right. And um, which, which you don't usually think of, right, coming from a Democrat. And so here you have a Republican now, Donald Trump actually talking about gun control, getting rid of bump stocks, um, striking a deal perhaps, as I just said, you know, uh, with Democrats on uh, border wall versus DACA. I mean, you know, this is what presidents do. They lead and they get people to come in the middle. Donald Trump, you know, the author of Art of the Deal. And I think we're going to start seeing Donald Trump really um, uh, embrace that. I think he's growing into the office. You know, he was, look, he was kind of belligerent early on, right? I mean, everybody was. I mean, you know, it was just this sort of great moment, and all of a sudden he came storming in, and he was going to drain the swamp, and now he's realizing, you know, you actually have to kind of work with everybody. And I think we're seeing a new mm -hmm. side of Donald Trump. I, I'm not going to call him a diplomat, but um, he's, he's, <laughs> but make, he's attempting no, we, diplomatic gestures. Americans don't want a diplomat. They, no. they wanted someone who could go in and be a change agent. Yeah. Go in and shake the whole place up. And in fact, that's what we're seeing right now. And the more that he can get done yes. in this kind of environment, I think the more people will be excited. He's bringing the base along. He sure is. Um, and, you know, basically going over there and telling Nancy, I'm going to take some of your base too, because well, you're not there for them, but I will be. So, you know, Trish, my office is a few blocks from here. I'm literally 50 yards from Trump Tower. And every time I come on the show, I walk uh, to join you, I walk right past Trump Tower. And every day, there are not just dozens, there are hundreds of people out there in front of Trump Tower. Trump Tower. They're not protesting. They're actually having their pictures taken. They're smiling. They're so proud to be out there in front of Trump Tower. It's such a different narrative when you actually see it in person versus what you, you know, read in the New York Times, the Washington Post, or here on MSNBC or CNN. Such a different reality. And I think... As Donald Trump grows into the office and, and reaches out to Democrats, you're going to see a lot of progress. And you're absolutely right. That's Armageddon for Nancy Pelosi. The last mm -hmm. thing she wants to see is uh, success. Or a higher stock market. Right. <laughs>